Firstly, thank you guys. Thanks for joining in. Uh, this uh, orientation is primarily uh, intended to give you a perspective in terms of you know what is coming your way. Most of you have already taken the sessions and you know must be going through the content right now at this point in time and preparing yourself for the upcoming uh, September or maybe December exam. I just thought to be here and talk through in terms of you know what is there in front of you in terms of the content, in terms of the overall, I would say, deliverable that you have um, in front of you and how should you be thinking about it from the standpoint of covering the entire curriculum and of course practicing the questions so that you know you really come up from the you know from you know as as in the flying colors from the examination room so that's the intent and i thought the right stepping stone would be to have something like this wherein we'll take the orientation together in terms of knowing this as the subject and uh, having the uh, glance in terms of you know how the overall syllabus areas looks like and then of course talk through in terms of you know what should be the right strategy for it so we'll quickly jump in in terms of you know what i have in store today uh, i do want to cover uh, the following wherein we'll touch upon you know the september 22 to june 23 syllabus areas guys just to let you know in case there is a curiosity and there are butterflies in your stomach the sessions that you've got are fully updated so anything and everything that is needed is there uh, there are some current issues that may come your way uh, because ACCA has uh, has still, uh, I would say, they are still uh, uh, issuing few for few current issues. So that may come your way. So if there is any new current issue that will come up, that will be circulated to you uh, on your on the WhatsApp, on the email, you know, that you have provided of Intram. But else than that, all the syllabus areas that sessions that you have on plate for yourself are fully updated. So nothing to be worried about. All right, moving on to what we intend to cover, we will be touching upon the syllabus areas. We'll talk, talk on the IFRSs that have been covered in the strategic business reporting exam per se. I just want to have a quick glance of it, or go, glance of that, we'll talk on that. I do want to discuss the capabilities that are expected in this exam. Now, ACCA, many of the times, I'm not sure if you have already seen that, but many of the times when ACCA comes back with an examiner report, they specifically discuss kind of issues that they have been observing and the capabilities that they're expecting from the candidates who are appearing for this exam. So I thought it is all the more worthwhile to really go through that with you in terms of what is expected out of you so that when you know that this is expected out of us, you know, you are in a better shape to really comment on in terms of, you know, how... Uh, you know, how, how can you really, uh, to an extent, how can you really have the full hang of what is needed? So we'll talk on that. And then we'll talk on, uh, in a brief uh, manner, we'll talk on the exam pattern and the format of this exam. I do want to touch upon the professional skills in strategic business reporting exam. Many of the, many of the students really miss on that. We'll talk on that in terms of, you know, what professional skills are required. And then um, I do want to touch upon, you know, what would your be going to be your, your journey for the strategic business reporting course. So we'll talk on that. And I'm sure, you know, by the, by now you have the course in front of you in terms of, you know, you going through the sessions, you would have seen it uh, by and large in, in, in totality, but I do want to cover up uh, what is there to be covered as you go forward in, and, and appear for your exam in September and December 2022. So we'll talk on that too. Does it sound like a plan? Yes, sir. We'll move on to the syllabus areas, guys. You know, this, um, this slide specifically shows you in terms of, you know, what kind of syllabus areas are there in the strategic business reporting exam. We have A to G syllabus areas as an A, B, C, D, E, F, and G syllabus areas in the strategic business reporting exam. And, you know, as, as I've been already saying this, you have all of this covered in the sessions that have been provided to you and anything and everything that is required is certainly certainly very very taken care of if i really talk on the syllabus area g that is the employability and the technology skill that effectively talks on you know the handling the exam in the cv environment so computer-based exam is something that the examiner really expects you to handle and that's what you should be really be, really be uh, i would say be well versed with 
in in the revision boot camp that you would see when you will practice questions with me you would see there are certain questions that we have handled in the computer in terms of you know how would you you know use the functionalities and so on and so forth and there are some uh, uh, i would say dedicated sessions also on the on the uh, um, the training of the computer based exam that session is also being provided to you have a look on that do not do not really miss on that from the a to f syllabus area standpoint the first thing and the foremost thing that you really need to know is the ethics and the professional principles that a strategic business reporting or a finance guy in an organization has to really manage now one thing that i really want to highlight over here is that strategic business reporting exam is not an erstwhile financial reporting exam wherein you will be told to prepare few things and give back to the examiner over here the intent of the examiner is and if you'll read through various acc examiner report you'll get to see that the intent of the examiner is that you should be talking more you should be thinking more and then you should be commenting more in terms of you know what is really going on in the financial statement so as far as the preparation of the overall account uh, overall financial statement or doing the limnish accounting is concerned that was more in fa and fr which is like financial accounting and financial reporting financial accounting at the knowledge level and financial reporting at the at the skill level but as far as the strategic business reporting is concerned the intent of an examiner is that he would test you more in terms of you having the full grasp of the overall analysis analytics commenting that you really need to do suggestion that you may need to have you knowing the ifrss and suggesting the right way of doing things you knowing the ethics and the professional principles of an organization as far as the financial reporting is concerned and commenting back on the issue that you may get to see in the exam emphasis would be less on the calculation less on the preparation but it would be more more on the overall overall understanding of the financial statement and commenting back the examiner giving the discussion in terms of in this is what it is and this is what it should be considering the ifrs considering the ethics that i have considering the professional principles that i've learned and so on and so forth this is what it's going to be and that's what really make this exam different from the erstwhile financial reporting or accounting exams and that is something you really need to have at the back of your mind that this is something that is expected out of me and i would not let that go is that clear yes sir now fundamental ethical and professional principle is the first piece of it and of course we'll touch upon in the syllabus area b the financial reporting framework or the conceptual framework at large in terms of you going through as to what what you what it really entails for you to have the ifrs is being built on 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 a, on a particular framework as to what that that conceptual framework is all about we'll be dwelling on that then we will certainly talk on you know how are you reporting um, the financial performance of an organization what you prepare how you prepare what all you include what all you not include and so on and so forth so we'll we'll be talking on that and of course when we're doing that we'll be touching upon various ifrss and i do have a list coming your way wherein we have talked on we will be talking on various ifrss that are being covered in this exam but important piece is that this area effectively entails various and many ifrss that you really need to be well versed with we'll talk on the financial statement of the group of the entities as in you would be if the folks are coming from the financial reporting background you have already prepared the financial statement of a group over there and and you know to the folks who have taken the exemptions of various acc subject and simply start starting off with the strategic business reporting as a as a subject all i can tell you is that what at the time of uh, crafting and drafting of the sessions that you may see at your you know uh, in your computer now which you know which fintram has provided you we have ensured that all of the sessions are taken from the scratch from the grassroots so that you are not missing on any concept there is a special emphasis that has gone behind making these sessions considering that there are many folks who would have gotten over here taking various exemptions they would not have given the financial accounting and reporting exam and straight away they are giving this bit exam so how you really need to be prepared off from the standpoint of knowing what has already been discussed or being taught at that level at the knowledge or the skill level 
then anything and everything has been duly taken care of. So you need not be worried about it. You know, anything and everything that you may need from the knowledge building standpoint is very well covered in these sessions. You should not be bothered about it. Is that clear? Yes, I can tell you many of the students they really approach us and say that, you know, I want to take an SBR, but should I take an FR? I may not have to give an example of an FR, but should I take an FR just to learn and just to know and, you know, my basics will be clear and, you know, we'll hit it hard and so on and so forth. Nope, nothing required. The strategic business reporting session of Intram really entails what is needed from the standpoint of building the concept and, of course, having the concept to the level that you can hit the exam hard and very hard. Is that clear? Yes, sir. See, this is the, you know, this is, this is my slang, right? Is that clear? And, and you know, yes, sir. It's in, and you, you would have seen in the sessions also, you know, it comes naturally on me, you know, in terms of, you know, just assimilating the fact that you have understood and moving on further. Moving on to the syllabus area, E, which is interpreting the financial statement for, for different stakeholders. This is going to be the key. Examiner really knows that you would have already gone through the content and of course, you know how to prepare things. Now he really wants to understand how do you interpret things. So interpreting the financial statement is gonna be a vital and an important thing in the exam. And we have practiced a lot on this in our, in our sessions and of course, in our revision bootcamp, wherein we've picked up the concept, the comprehensive and past examination questions, just to ensure that you get a hang of it in terms of you know what is being asked in the exam. And last but not the least is the syllabus area F, which is effectively nothing but the current issues. Examiner wants that any strategic business reporting guy who is hitting the market and of course working for any corporate, they should really know what is going on in the industry as far as the changes are concerned or the regulations are concerned. Current issues are basically the the IFRS is in pipeline, if I may say that for the lack of better word, but these are like not fully blown IFRSs, but things that are being discussed or being brought to the notice of the authorities saying that this is coming our way. And if this is this, then what should we be doing from the treatment standpoint? And we've covered various current issues in our sessions. You would have seen many of them by now. Some of them may more, I would say, be, be, may be maybe added on um, in, 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 uh, in the coming days. And if there is any, you would certainly receive, you know, receive that from us in terms of you know, what those current issues are, as in the recent current issues are. Employability and technology skills, I've already spoken. You know, it is nothing but the handling the exam in the CB environment. I'm sure you have gone through that and you're seeing that in the revision bootcamp because we have very, very well covered this. If I have to really talk on the broad IFRS as my friend in terms of you know, what is being covered in the strategic business reporting as an exam, this slide basically tells you, you know, in terms of how the pillar of the strategic business reporting really flares up in terms of you know, what that really includes. We have the conceptual framework we've already done that, presentation and, and you know, of, of the published financial statement in terms of how would you prepare that. These are like basic things that you really need to know. Then you have the non-current asset accounting, you have the intangible asset accounting and the impairment, very basic, very, very heavily tested in the exam. But revenue accounting, there is no exam, there is no exam wherein revenue has not been tested in some way or the other. So you should certainly know that. Know that The accounting of the foreign currency is again something you know, to, be, to be looked upon. That is, a, again, you know, I would say a heavily tested area. We have a, some small, small topics like you know, inventory, agriculture, change in accounting policy, prior period item, Lease accounting is not a small one, but yes, lease accounting is again there, accounting for taxes, earning per share, and so on and so forth. Even after the reporting period, provisions and contingencies, financial instruments, derivatives and hedge accounting, employee benefit, share-based payment, segment reporting and related party disclosures, IFRS 1, where you know, when you're implementing IFRS for the first time, what you should be doing at that point in time, reporting for the small and medium enterprises, then we have the group accounting, which is like the consolidation, overall consolidation in terms of how does that happen. The associates, joint ventures, and the group disposals are again something which is very much there in the strategic business reporting area. And you really need to know in terms of you know, what you would do from the disposal standpoint. We do have change in group structure and group accounting over here. And of course, the foreign currency impact of that, statement of cash flows, the group statement of cash flows, analysis and interpretation, the professional and ethical duty of an accountant, which is like professional and ethical principles. And then last but not the least is the current issue. Now this 
I would say if you really compare it to the financial reporting as an exam, this is very vast in terms of coverage. And it really includes many areas in addition to what you would have seen if you have seen in the financial reporting as an exam. But this effectively entails and covers anything and everything that was there in financial reporting. And of course, they have built on various things onto this. For example, there was no a group statement of cash flow there, but in strategic business reporting, we have that. There was no professional ethical duty, but over here we have it and so on and so forth. So there are various things that have been added on over here, which were not there. And that is where you really need to be, really need to be working hard on that. One thing that I really want to highlight, and this certainly comes from the fact that many of the students at times really, uh, really feel more, uh, uh, confident or I would say um, feel overconfident at times, especially, you know, I'm talking about the folks who are coming from the chartered accountancy background. They feel that they've already cleared C and, you know, they have already gone through this as a content because many of the terms that have been given over here seems familiar. And, you know, being a chartered accountant, I can very well say that. But all you really need to know is that IFRS at times somewhat is somewhere is different as in they are different in terms of the treatment. And you really need to know that. So while you may have an edge because you know this, these terminologies and the basics around it, but you really need to learn what IFRS really says about it. And you really have to unlearn a few things that you already learned somewhere else. So unlearning and learning is the process that you really need to follow to ensure that you're not missing on the content and the context of an IFRS and you're not missing on the overall theme. Please ensure that many times I've seen the chartered accountancy students really getting more or overconfident on that and then losing the marks. We should not do that. The sessions, the way they have been crafted and drafted, they are really starting from the grassroots level. And you would know each and everything that you really need to know in order to get strength in a particular IFRS. And I'm sure those who have, you know, of you who are seeing the sessions can really relish in terms of, you know, how we have created that. And we feel pride in saying this. That what we have done is that we've ensured that the grassroots level is being taken to the top so that you really understand it on the end-to-end -end basis. Is that clear, guys? Yes, sir. Well, coming on to the capability that is expected. Now, this is something that I've picked up. I've picked up from the ACC website. Uh, you know, one of the uh, uh, report had this in terms of, you know, what they really need. Uh, a candidate to demonstrate in the exam as far as the strategic business reporting is concerned. They really want you to know the ethical and the professional principles at, at length. And of course, when you know that, you know, what is ethical, you would certainly know, certainly know what is unethical and what can be the consequences around it. And when you know the consequences, you can certainly discuss that. So effectively, what it really means is that Ethics and professional principle is something that should be there in your heart, in your mind. It should be engraved on yourself and you should be able to discuss that this is not right. And if this is not right, then these, these can be the, um, this can be the consequence. And that's what examiner really expects you. That's what one of the questions in the exam would surely be testing you on. Be prepared for it. If I really move on to the part B of it, you know, evaluating the appropriateness of the financial reporting framework and critically discuss changes in the accounting regulation. Now, I think, you know, I would bifurcate this into two pieces. One is evaluation of appropriateness of the financial reporting framework. You know, whatever has been given, you know, you should really have to be able to comment that, you know, this is right or wrong. This is what you have learned in the IFRS, in the conceptual framework, you should be able to tell that. As I said, this is not a post well financial reporting exam wherein you have to prepare something. Nopes, you have to assess over here. You have to discuss over here. You have to critically assess few things over here. And that's what really got to be making this exam different from the other one. You really have to know in terms of, you know, what that difference is, what the issue is. And if this is the issue, then what you should be doing to correct that. Very important. Do not miss on that. And then critical discuss changes in the accounting regulation, which is more like current issues. We have covered current issues at length, my friend, in terms of, you know, how one should be handling that. Please go through and see those sessions. Talking on the professional judgment and reporting of the financial performance of range of entities, it is more to do with various IFRSs. Many of the time situation that you may get to see in the exam is that you may get to see some of the IFRSs not being applied rightfully. 
So you should be knowing how what the IFRS really says. You should be knowing what the IFRS really applies uh, to that particular industry, that particular company. You know what kind of scenario it is. You should be able to wear the hat of that particular scenario, as in in that particular scenario, and then comment on that. This is what it is. And this vote really holds true. And if this is this, and this has to be this. So you have to apply your professional judgment, considering the scenario, considering the industry you are in. And then knowing that IFRS, you should be able to comment on that this is right or wrong. And if it is wrong, then what should be the right treatment of it is something that is expected out in the exam. And that is what we've handled at length in our revision boot camp and in the sessions. And I'm sure you'll be able to watch that out. Alrighty. Prepare the financial statement of the group of entities. Generally, you do not get a question to prepare something over here, but examiner wants you to know that because he at times not gives you the full-fledged question for preparing. He may give you one or two statements to be prepared. So he really wants you to know as to how should you be preparing that. And that is the reason, you know, one of the sessions that you would see in the, you know, in, in, the, in the sessions that have been provided to you specifically deal with the preparation of the financial statement in terms of how one should be doing that. And interpretation is coming next, which is like you should be knowing how to interpret that. I think I've highlighted that enough now. You really need to know how one would be interpreting the financial statement for different stakeholders as to what really holds on to good from the investor standpoint, shareholder standpoint, creditor standpoint, debtor standpoint, the regulator standpoint, and so on and so forth. Is that clear, guys? Yes, sir. Moving on to communication, my friend, you have to communicate the impact of changes and potential changes in accounting regulation or financial reporting. Again, the current issues, we know that, sir, we have already covered that. And then demonstrating the employability and technology skills, which is nothing but the CB framework, sir. You have to have to know the computer-based exam because when you will step into any industry, any corporate, you have to handle anything and everything in computer. And that's what exam really expects you to work on. Is that clear, guys? Yes, sir. Now, coming on to the strategic business reporting format, my friend, in terms of, you know, what the format is. And I'm sure, you know, if you have already started the revision bootcamp, you would get to see the slide over there. We have section A and section B, my friend, in this exam, where in section A has two questions. One 30 mark question that is generally on the consolidation in terms of any issue that you may get to see in the exam. As far as the overall consolidation is concerned, something may not have done rightly. And you know, if that is the case, then how would you be able to correct that? You have to discuss, suggest, recommend in terms of the suggestion that you may have over there. And that really carries 30 marks in the exam. We have to talk on the second question that you may get to see in section A. That is the ethics question, which really carries the 20 mark, which is a 20 mark question, where something that has happened in an organization is not good from the ethics standpoint. So we'll, you know, of course, we have ran through, you know various sessions on the professional and ethical issues in terms of telling you that these all are the issues. And in order to understand that and know that, you really need to know that considering the industry we are in, considering, considering the corporate we are in and you know situation we are in, this is what has happened and this is not right. Something has not gone right from the professional or ethical issue standpoint. And if this is the case, how one should be recommending that. If you really recall, and if you've seen the session, you would also know the kind of exam techniques that we have really discussed over there in terms of how one should be handling the ethics portion of the exam. It is a 20 marker question, effectively making the section A to be of 50 marks. Is that clear, guys? Yes, sir. Now, coming on to the section B, you know, section B has two questions again, you know, 25 marks each, and you know, these are like various IFRSs being clubbed together. They would ask you questions, making, you know, you face a situation uh, in a corporate and recommending the right treatment of the IFRSs over there. And maybe at times that involves calculation also in terms of, you know, what the right calculation would be basis the right treatment of an IFRS. Many times current issues are being asked in section B. So you should be prepared of that in terms of, you know, what is really getting on, on you know, in the, in the recent, in the industry, you should be knowing that. As I said, we have covered this at length, just go through those videos at least, at least twice. All right, moving on to the strategic business reporting uh, professional marks. You know, we do have four professional marks in the exam. You know, it is like, uh, you know, while, 
you are giving the exam, you should know that there are two professional marks in section A and two professional marks in section B. Uh, in section A, two professional marks are awarded for applying the ethical principles and recommending the appropriate action. So effectively, when you're doing and recommending the issues and recommending the right issue that you're seeing in the principle, and of course, recommending the appropriate action, you will effectively get two marks as a professional marks over there. Do not, do not miss on that. And in section B, two professional marks are awarded for appropriate discussion in relation to the conceptual framework. So the conceptual framework that you've learned, if you really circle down that in the issue that is being given to you in the exam, if you're able to really highlight that, you know, this is what the conceptual framework is saying, and this is what uh, is happening over here, leading to this much of an issue. And of course, it is impacting the importance of the financial statement to the users. And you're able to highlight that rightfully and able to recommend the rightful action over there, you would get two marks for that. So effectively, four marks are coming in terms of how you would handle these questions in the exam rather than writing the content around it. It's a three hour, 15 minutes exam. I'm sure you, know, you already know it. And you have to handle all four questions and all four questions are compulsory. And of course, section A and section B has two marks each from the professional, professional skill standpoint. Is that clear, guys? Yes, sir. All right. Now, this slide effectively, you know, this is more to, um, um, you know, make you understand in terms of, you know, what has already been there with you. And for the folks who are seeing this for the first time, seeing me for the first time, you should also know that, you know, what you would be getting when you'll be enrolling yourself for the strategic business reporting course with Fintram. You know, what you would get is the detailed video lectures that covers all of the syllabus areas that are relevant from the September 22 to the June 23 exam. And all you also get along with that is the unlimited views. We do not restrict you to view the session. You know, you can view our sessions any number of times as you may want. We are not restricting you on that. You also get the comprehensive study material, you know, which is being collated, current, and of course, crafted and drafted in a way that it is very crisp and clear. And of course, it is grassrooted from the, uh, I would say, from the overall overall uh, content standpoint. It is very well covered, you know, from the standpoint of knowing you, you knowing the each and every aspect and having the rightful background. You should know that, and that's how we have created that after referring to, of course, ACC, you know, curriculum, after referring to various uh, uh, publishers in terms of, you know, what they really want you to understand. It has been created in a way that you are not given less and not given more, you know, as compared to what you should be really doing in order to create this exam with the flying colors. Very, very well taken care of. Do you really need to refer any other study material? Answer is absolutely not. You should not be referring anything. Anything that you really need is very well covered in this. There are, you know, and there are many students have already cleared the exam by this. So you should certainly clear it. All that you really need is practice, practice, and practice questions by your own hand. And if you have seen my session, this is something I keep saying that like a broken record. In addition to the study material and of course the video lectures, you would also get the revision boot camp, wherein we'll be covering and revising various examinable concepts. You would also get the video question marathon, aka, I would say, the video exam kit. What we have done is that we are giving the video exam kit, wherein we have picked up the concept, comprehensive and past examination question and faculty solving. it. I'm solving that, giving you all the tips and tricks that you need in order to clear the exam in the best way possible in terms of, you know, what exam you really expect out of from you. We do have the computer-based exam training. And of course, you know, there are questions that are being solved in the computer-based framework. That is also there in terms of giving you I would say the guidelines in terms of how one should be handling that in the exam. In addition to that, what you also get is the tutor support. You can, of course, WhatsApp me, email me, telegram me, and we'll be happy to really pick it up and answer you there. And then you also have a mock exam, my friend, and, you know, that may come your way, you know, I would say 15 days prior to your exam, where you have to give the mock exam and you would get the individual performance review in terms of you know, how you're doing and what all are the areas where you need to improve upon. And last but not least is the FinFlam exam pass assurance that comes up with the six months plan, wherein if, you know, while by all, uh, by the grace of God, students, you know, would surely clear in the six months. But if, if, you, if you are not clearing for whatsoever reason, you know, FinTram is uh, confident enough of their material, of their content, that they can reasonably say that, you know, if you're not able to clear, you know, we'll be happy to offer you another attempt 
just after that in terms of you know what where you have not cleared we'll offer you one more attempt and that will be free of cost and that will cost will be on us moving on you know i do have i would say last slide over here wherein you know i while i i think this is a strong grounding for you to really build on what you may need to do is something is is, is something to be um, to be really to be thought about from the standpoint of you knowing as to what you really need to cover and what we intended to do today was that to give you a glance in terms of you know this is something that you really need to cover and this is something that you would you have already got start studying and in case of any issue you can certainly reach out to us i have given the uh, you know the contact details over here you can reach out to us call us whatsapp us and we'll be happy to help you in case you're not registered with fintram you know again and you want to you can reach out to us and the team is here to really help you in terms of you know taking the next step forward with that i'm open for any kind of uh, questions that anyone may have i do have one more take on that you know considering uh, the 22 23 uh, syllabus area we are already you know working on on the uh, study plan so we would be giving you week wise study plan in terms of you know what you should be covering on daily basis so that you are able to cover the entire content and you're ready for the exam that would be ready by the next week so you know in case you need that just drop a note or whatsapp on this number and team will be happy to share that with you you would get the detailed study plan on the daily basis passing percentage kamaksha is 50% i think kavish rightly said that where to send any query any sbi related email id uh, rangan you would have received an email from pentram wherein the classes would have been shared with you email id is mentioned over there wherein you have to you know raise a query if you have any you can raise a query to you know you know on that email id and we'll be happy to pick it up all right guys any questions anyone may have i'll be happy to happy to pick it up anyone guys anyone has anything please don't feel shy you know this is your time ask anything that may come your way sir whether 60 days is enough to appear for the sbr exam rangan it really depends on how much time you're spending in these 60 days if you're doing a job on this you know i'm just assuming that you're doing a job in addition to of course preparing for the exam i don't see 60 days to be enough time i think i would reasonably say that you should have 90 days to clear the exam but if you are not doing anything but only and only studying then i think 60 days is good enough a time to really crack this exam in the best possible way and i can i can tell you one thing uh, that you you really have to have at the back of your mind and this is something i i always say um, to many of the students saying that in order to become or clear the exam early you should not end up in a situation wherein you have delayed yourself so what i'm trying to say is that in case you only have 60 days better to push it to december and clear it in one go rather than appearing in september and then appearing in december again so my take would be uh, again i'm just giving an example my take would be prepare to the best of your capabilities and give it when you're really ready rather than you know just giving it for the heck sake of giving it arvind says will there will be any live classes every week no there is nothing like every week kind of a thing arvind over here but you would certainly you know see few sessions that may come your way in the coming weeks uh, uh, or the coming months you i am preparing for few things that i really need to talk on and uh, those are the things that will pick up in the live sessions but there are no live sessions every week kind of thing do we have a revision session for the september exam revision boot camp covers overall uh, a practice of the questions and of course revising those concept rajendra you know have a look on that as i said there are few things that i really want to cover separately for which i'll be coming live in the coming months before your exam uh, you should be surely attending that and information would be shared to you very well in advance arvind says i have received the kits ebook as chance of a pdf version it's more i'm not clear arvind what are you trying to say are you saying any chance of pdf version as in you are expecting the pdf version is that okay okay got that arvind no arvind it's not in our hand you know kaplan doesn't provide the pdf versions you know kaplan only provide the way it has been provided to you we are the channel partner of kaplan and uh, there is a modality in which kaplan really works in terms of you know sharing and there are like you know copying issues and copyright issues 
what they have. You know, just so PDF version, if they would give, it can get circulated anywhere and everywhere. And that's the reason they never, never um, you know, allow that to happen. Uh, their, their sessions, are, the, the, the version has to be watched in a particular software and that is what that would be available to you. I don't think so, Arvind, you know, maybe uh, I have seen that software myself. I have worked on in that software. It's not that difficult, but of course, it's not that comfortable too when it comes to PDF. You know, PDF is certainly more comfortable, uh, but, you know, it is what it is, Arvind. I can't really change what Kaplan is offering, you know. Kaplan offers uh, the, you know, the format in the same way. So I can't really uh, help on that. Anything else, guys, anyone may have before we really wrap up? Last call out. Whether we need to follow Kaplan or only Fintram, Fintram kit is enough. I always say, uh, you know, and uh, I have I've been saying this, the content that Fintram has created is more than enough, uh, my friend. All that you really need to do, in addition to that, if you have to, practice few more past examination questions. And that is going to be it. But we never stop anyone referring any book. So we will not stop you to refer Kaplan, BPP, whatsoever it is, you can certainly you know, feel free. But as far as need is concerned, Fintram's material is more than enough. All that you may need to top up with is practicing few more past exam questions and you're ready for the exam. All right, any, any other questions guys, before we really wrap up, I'm giving the last, last call out before we really wrap up for the day. When can the entire syllabus be covered within? What does that mean, Arvind? I'm still not clear. When can the entire syllabus be covered within? Are you saying, okay, are you asking, saying that how much time it really takes to complete the entire syllabus? Okay. As I said, if you're, if you're working, I believe that it will take you 90 days to complete the entire content. If you're working, because you would get very, you know, restrictive time. But if you're not working, then 60 days is enough a time. I think, you know, that's what I just mentioned to Rangan also, that if you are already sitting at home and have full time dedicating to a particular subject, 60 days is good enough a time to be, to be prepared for this. But if you are doing something side by side, even some other study or some other subject, I would reasonably say 90 days is the, is the good enough time that you would need. All right. Thank you, Arvind. That's what I wanted to cover my friend. That's what uh, you know, I wanted you to have a look on and of course, uh, um, you know, help you out in your journey as you may see going forward. I really want you to do well. And that is the reason we would keep bothering you with the content, with the additions that we really need to make on. And of course, make you come up with the flying curls. And of course, treat me with the cup of coffee when you're done with the exam. That is what I wanted to cover, my friend. I'll see you again in the next one. Until then, you have the, you know, uh, the email ID and, of course, the contact details of Fintram in case you need to ask anything, register for anything, do reach out to them, and we'll be more than happy to help. Thank you, guys. Have a good day.